Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, what's good? It's your main man, Hollywood Chuck, with another Top TV. I'm here with Storm Conquer, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Renee Marie. You, you know better get what my mean? name right. Rena Maria. I'm sorry. No, just... <laughs> Rena Maria. Yeah, say Storm what you Rena Maria. You know what yeah. I mean? She be switching and she just switched her style up. Niggas want to call me, you know, I'm on live, you know what I mean? Worldwide with it, you feel me? And you want to call me. But you've been doing a lot. You got the Strip Her Society. Yep. You've been in five movies. You've been in the uh, T Grizzly and Skiller Baby video. Um, you come from Humble Beginnings. Definitely. And uh, I'm glad you came and chopped it with me. You know what I mean? I'm glad you came and chopped it with me. What is uh What's up with you? What you got going on first? Because you got a lot going yes, on. She got, got a lot so going on, y'all. So what what you got going on first? So the thing that my I'm par- like my how can I say it? I got so much going on. Shit. Yeah, a lot. Right now we're focused on stripper society. Okay? okay. Stripper society is a reality TV show based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Where all the exotic dancers in the city. I had mm-hmm. them auditions and then tapes, um, and I had to choose only ten girls. It was hard. That was tough, wasn't it? Yes, out of like a hundred entries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I chose ten girls. Um, right now we're at nine. They flocked to that. Huh? They flocked to the definitely to to be a part of that um, show. Show. Mm-hmm. So I just eliminated somebody yesterday. Wait a minute. So, what's the process of eliminate? Hold on, wait. First of all, what is the prerequisite to get on the show to be a top ten contestant? What is um, what is it? I need their personality be on point, their hustle, their drive. Um, I work with a few of them, so I got to see like how they network, how they work in the club, mm-hmm. and so I chose them from that. Right. Um, and how their video submission was, for real. I need somebody loyal. I need loyal and dedicated girls on this season. And you were saying that uh, you not only want to just bring them on to highlight their bodies and their right. beauty, but you wanted to bring them on to highlight more so about their life and the things that they've been through, yeah. and not that they just a piece of meat, but they actually are. Because I, when I when I think about, I never really was like, yeah. Uh, stripper, da, da da da. I really just look at them like exotic dancers. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? On a more professional side yeah. of things. That's what we like being called to. Exotic dancers. Um, and so that's what you want to kind of put out there to the world. Yeah, I kind of want. Or to what show you are world. putting out there to the world. Yeah, I want to show them that they're much more than uh, strippers. Mm-hmm. They're much more than just exotic dancers. Because when I started dancing, it was a reason. You know, I was a foster kid. So, right. Um, like my mom had me when she was young. Mm-hmm. She had me very young, gave me up to my aunt. My aunt who raised me uh, passed away when I was 16. So from 16, I had to go back in the system right. and go to foster care. Let me ask you something because you got to be a strong individual to, you know, with overcome your mom passing, then, you know... I think somebody passing you something over there. Okay. Uh, you had to be a strong individual for your mom to pass, and then you go into the system, and then your auntie to pass, and then you go back into the system. My mom, my, my biological mom didn't pass. She I'm was sorry. young. Yep. I'm sorry. She was young. So she had me like So 14. she gave you up. She gave me up, yeah, because yeah. she couldn't take care of me. And then that's when I moved with my aunt who raised me, and yeah. then she passed, and then I went back to the system. When you went back to the system... At 16, what was your mind? Where was my mind at? Yeah, what was your mind at? What was you thinking? I then? was lost because everything changed like this. Like yeah. When she passed away August 14th, it was like, August 15th, I had my day already planned. And mm-hmm. then when she passed away on the 14th, it was just like, I got to fly back. Because when she passed away, I was in Atlanta. Yeah. And I was going for a casting call. And something told me to stay home. She was like... Um, give me a hug before you get on the flight because it also was my first flight. Yeah. She was like, You may not see me again. I gave her this real cheesy. Now, hug. this was your auntie. Yeah, my auntie. Yeah. And I gave what her this her name? real. Bert. Okay. Yeah, I gave her this real cheesy ass hug. And I was like, I'm going to see you when I get back. Mm-hmm. And an hour after I talked to her on the phone on the 14th, she passed away. So my mind was just like, Where I'm about to live? Yeah. What school I'm about to go to? How I'm about to survive? And who's going to get me? Right. Right. And so. When when all that was going through your head, 
what did you do? What was your next step? To be honest. Yeah. The truth. Yeah. Uh, when she passed away, I tried to commit suicide. Mm. Um, I felt like my world was over. Yeah. I didn't have my biological mom at the time. And then the only mom that I knew passed away. Wow. So I felt like nobody would understand me. Mm -hmm. The most important person in my life was gone. And um, I tried to take 56 sleeping pills, well, Benadryl. Um, and I went to the graveyard. Um, I took those pills. Every time I felt pain, every time I thought about something that happened to me, every time I thought about my aunt not being here, and um, the paramedics ended up coming. And I went to the hospital. And from the hospital, they put me into a group facility, a group home. Um, you, you didn't die. Nope. You went to the group home and did you go through struggles at the group home? Did you um, excel from the group home once you got to the group home? How did, how did things go in the group home? Mm. From you transitioning from the group home because you 16. Yeah. I'm and you about to be 18 in two years. Yeah. And so, once you got to the group home, we know what's going on in there. Yeah. How it did was, you transition out of that? I was because it's that, hard. Yeah. Because let's keep it real. Just, let's keep it real. You know, transitioning from a group home into the world and losing your um, your auntie and not having your mother in your life uh, could have turned you sour. Yeah. yeah. But it did. Definitely. I was in a group home for 30 days. Um, I stood there. It was a lockdown facility. Couldn't see outside. Couldn't make phone calls out. People had that to was make solitary phone. confinement. Yeah, people had to make phone calls in. But, and that made me feel worse because I'm like, I can't call out to reach out to nobody. Yeah. So it showed me who was really there. I didn't receive no phone call. Did that make you callous days. to people? It made me turn up. It made me realize, like, I'm all like, that's where Storm under. came from at the group home. Okay. I believed in because I said, I'm going through a storm right now. And in this storm, I believe in conquering this storm, not letting the storm conquer me. And so fast forward, you know, we 18. What? I was just getting out of another foster care. They put me in, like, seven foster homes. So they put you in, like, seven foster homes. When Because uh, did you get... Did you go through any abuse in them foster homes? Did you go have good families? How uh, mm -hmm. was the foster homes? One lady couldn't. One lady couldn't speak English. She was Arabic, mm -hmm. so it was so hard to to communicate what I needed from her. But that only lasted a few weeks. And there, I remember it was this one particular foster lady. She didn't have breakfast, lunch. She had. She gave us breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Mm -hmm. But it was all hot pockets, the same brand, oh the God. same flavor. And I used to call Lee and um, CPS like. My foster parent is not feeding us. You know, it didn't work. They didn't yeah. care. So I ended up running away from that foster home. And then I ended up sleeping at the cemetery. Um, and I used to go to the cemetery where my mom was at until the gates closed. Somebody, a man, tapped me on my shoulder. was like, we're about to close. Ended up going to the laundry mat, put my head down. Mm -hmm. um, coming up with some money, getting my first car. But I was a runaway at this point. So From the state? Yeah, I was a runaway. I was AWOL, what they said. And then from there... They put me into another foster home, and I told the judge, like, I think I'm ready. And I started dancing. Right. To get my money. And when you started dancing, were you afraid? Yeah, I started off at a white club, though. I was at Hustlers. And the only reason why I was afraid, because I was in the church when my auntie was alive. So. You didn't want people to judge you? Or was that what you, was that what you was afraid of? Um, or was it just you was afraid because it was something new? New. I didn't want people so to young. judge me. And I didn't know how to twerk. I didn't grow up like that. Like, I didn't grow up. <laughs> yeah, you put a little closest, weight on, too. Yeah, you know well, what I'm saying? You didn't thick it up. You know what I'm saying? The closest to twerking was my goodies by fear. Right. That was all I knew. My goodies. Not my goodies. Listen, here. That's it. So you took, so so you took, and so fast forward, you, you started dancing or whatever like that, be, became an exotic <laughs> dancer. Yeah. And you took that, at 18 and turned up and you know you've been traveling the world you've been yeah. making a big bag you know as they would say you've been buying your foreign cars you've been you know really living the life that you desire yeah definitely. the struggle built the hustle though. the struggle built the hustle say definitely. that shit definitely say that shit you better say that definitely. shit definitely that's all it was it was just I'm in this world by myself what are you going to do right what are you going to do 
Mm-hmm. And no, dancing was not like, I could have went to college. I could have did all that. But at that moment, I needed, no. I needed a way out right at this moment. And I didn't care at the moment. I cared, but I didn't care how people would look at me. Right. I asked everybody in my family, how would y'all feel if I start dancing? They was like, no, you're better than that. You know, we raised but you would they not? would they not lend a helping hand? Mm-mm. And see, that be the thing, black folks. That be the thing, people. You know what I'm saying? You you know, you want to judge somebody. You want to talk crazy down. You want to talk down on people. But if you're not lending a helping hand, you ain't got shit to say for real. Definitely. You ain't really got nothing to say. Like, if you're not giving me a solution to what's going on with me, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. really ain't really got much to say to me. So, you know, I commend you for, you know, you. you know, standing strong, being, you know, standing on ten toes, you know, really having some direction in your life when you, you know, you didn't have no direction like that. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's all good. It's a part of the process. Everything we go through in life is really a part of the process. Mm -hmm. And at moments you feel like, why is this happening to me? What is wrong? Why did God give me these cards? Like, no, whatever card you've been dealt with, just take it. Would you take any of your, would you take anything back? If Uh, you could? The only thing I would really take back is that hug I gave my aunt before I left for mm-hmm. Atlanta. I would hug her tighter. Uh, you know what I'm uh, saying? I would tell she's her, She's so like, sweet, y'all. I appreciate you. Like, she's so thank sweet. You, she's, you such a, she's such a sweet lady. <laughs> so, you, you, you dancing, you uh, started a reality show. Yep. The first one, a couple years ago. Maybe four years ago? Yep. Three, four years ago, yep, you started three, a reality show. So, what gave you the inspiration to start a reality show? Because everybody kept DMing me. How do you, you know, I want to be a stripper. I want to be a dancer. So, I said, why not get a group of girls together mm-hmm. that don't know the game and teach them? Right. That you still can be a dancer keeping your morals, your virtues, and your values. Like, when people hear the word stripper, what do you think of? Stripper. When I think of stripper, I feel like stripper is like a derogatory term yeah, for Yeah, but when you dancer. hear stripper, don't you think of hoe? Yeah. Or some of y'all yeah, it's make it yeah, yeah, you know. That's what a lot of people think of. And the it's different types. Being yeah. a stripper does not make you make you a HOE. Right. Being an HOE makes you a HOE. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I wanted to teach these girls and let them know like y'all can still dance. They have morals, have virtues, and have respect. Mm-hmm. So that's why I started the first show. So you know, because a lot of stuff can go on in a dance uh, um in a strip club, guys can dangle large amounts of money at you, mm-hmm. you know, offer you sexual advances for, and some girls do it, you know. Right. Was that your no. path? No, hell, fuck no. Can I cut on here? Yeah. Hell no. So the nigga ain't, the nigga ain't <laughs> no. coming to 10,000, you know, 20,000 no. to say, you money know, you cold me. like that. I want, I'm trying to, no, you money know, don't let's. Move me. I've been in the room with the, the hottest. Mm-hmm. I've been in the rooms with, if y'all know me, y'all know I've been in the rooms with CBJ. Mm-hmm. I done been in the rooms with P. Diddy. I done been in the rooms with Finesse Two Times, Skrillet Baby. T- P. Diddy ain't trying to get at you. I've been in the of rooms with did. so many people. <laughs> and the rest of them. And that don't move me. Yeah. It don't move me. And I think it's a difference. It's a difference for me. Maybe because Why? I'm a Why lesbian. The- That's I'm a oh, lesbian. Oh, okay. You so forgot. you strictly love. I mean, you know, I... Um, so that don't move me. So everything I do, and that's what I want to teach these girls. Like, no matter if a guy come to me, because God still trying to yeah, regardless of you. Period. Amazing. But if they come into me and offer me, like, at what cost? My whole life I've been doing stuff at my cost, mm-hmm. at this cost. You know what I'm saying? Like being silenced because of my past, because of what I got going on. Yeah. So in foster care, I didn't have no voice. Yeah. Uh, when my mom had me young, I didn't have a voice then. When my aunt passed away, I didn't have a voice. When my brother just recently got killed, I didn't have a voice. The only thing I got is me. So I'm going to tell you all hell no. Because mm-hmm. I matter. You and know you, what I'm saying? you really loved your brother. I, I think that you really loved your brother a whole mm-hmm. lot. Um, and he supported you. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he did for sure. What, what keep you going at night? Because you have suffered a lot of different uh, traumas in your life. So what keep you moving? Their breath. Mm-hmm. I got to breathe for multiple people now. Okay, so you, you know, got to live. I got to live. Like, I got to breathe for my brother. I got to mm-hmm. breathe for my aunt. I got to breathe for 
the 10, 20 other fallen angels I got. Right. And it's up to me. Like, if I'm here and I'm breathing, yeah. they winning. Hey, guess what? She damn sure doing yeah. the damn thing, you know, worldwide with this shit. You know, make sure y'all tap in and, you know, storm mm -hmm. conquer, uh, strip her society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's going to be dropping. When that's going to be dropping? Uh, we're filming in August. They're going to start filming in August. Make sure y'all stay tuned to this live broadcast. We'll be right back. Yeah.